A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, the, uh, thus says the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, O people of Zion who dwell in Jerusalem, no more will you weep. He will be gracious to you when you cry out. As soon as he hears, he will answer you. The Lord will give you the bread you need and the water of, uh, for which you thirst. No longer will, you, uh, will your teacher hide himself, but with your own eyes you shall see your teacher. While for, uh, from behind a voice shall sound in your ears, this is the way, walk in it, when you would turn to the right or to the left. He will give rain for the seed that you uh, sow in the ground, and the wheat that the soil produces will be rich and abundant. On that day, your flock will be given pasture, and the lamb will graze in spacious meadows. The oxen and the asses that till the ground will eat a silage tossed uh, to them with shovel and pickfork. Upon, uh, upon every high mountain and lofty hill, there will be a stream of running water. On the day of the great slaughter, when the tower fall, the towers fall. The light of, of the moon will be like that of the sun, and the light of the sun will be seven times greater than the light of, uh, uh, light of seven days. On the day of the Lord binds up the wounds of his people, he will heal the bruises left by his blows. The word of the Lord. Blessed are those, blessed are all who wait for the Lord. Praise the Lord, for he is good. Sing praise to your God, uh, to our God, for he is gracious. It is fitting to praise him. The Lord rebuilds Jerusalem, the dispersed of, uh, of Israel he gathers. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He tells the number of the stars. He calls each by name. Great is our Lord and mighty in power. In his wisdom there is no limit. The Lord sustains the lowly, the wicked he casts to the ground. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. 
Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord is our judge, our lawgiver, our king. He, he it is who will save us. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Now Jesus went around all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the kingdom of God and curing every disease and illness. At the sight of the crowds, his heart was moved with pity for them because they were troubled and abandoned like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is abundant, but the laborers are few. So ask the master of the harvest to send out laborers for his harvest. Then he summoned his 12 disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to drive them out and to cure every disease and every illness. Jesus set, uh, sent out uh, these 12 after instructing them thus, go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as you go, make this proclamation, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse lepers, drive out demons, Without cost you have received, without cost you are to give. The Gospel of the Lord. One of the um, more amusing things I hear as a priest, especially uh, uh, when it comes to understanding our ecclesiology as Catholics, and I'm sure you've heard it before too, the people will say, oh, the Catholic Church, all these rules, all these man-made rules, I'm some of you heard me say this over and over again. I will always say, yes, you are absolutely right. They're all man-made rules. Every single last one of the things that we have in the church is man-made rules. Oh, so it just shows you. It just goes to show you that I say yes. By the way, the man's name is Jesus Christ. Everything we do in the church is through a man named Jesus Christ, who is also God. And we comply ourselves. We, we make sure that we do it his way and not our way. We, we are the ones who are really insignificant. But rather, what we have to do, as we hear in today's first reading, as we are now in, in the first uh, uh, week of Lent, uh, uh, of Advent, to remind ourselves that we are supposed to follow in his way. We are supposed to do it uh, his way. We are not supposed to be putting our two cents forward, but rather cooperate cooperate with God's grace. And of course, one of the things that Jesus did put in place is what we hear in today's uh, uh, gospel. He set up the church based on his 12 apostles. And these apostles 2,000 years later are called our bishops. And they still have the effect. The effect that Jesus gave the 12, which was now passed on into the, the bishops of the 21st century as part of their spiritual DNA, is to be able to do exactly what Jesus says. Come, gives them authority over unclean spirits to dry them out and, and to cure every disease and illness. And of course, this is why when we have the oils over here, we so often put the oils in a corner and say, oh, well, isn't that cute? Or isn't that a nice display? Isn't that a, a cute little thing we, we have over here in, in getting a blessing for those who are sick? Because remember, the, these, these are not blessings these are not they're sacraments these are things that give us grace and of course these very oils are the representation of our bishop here at saint wilfred's because it is at the chrism mass that those oils are consecrated by the bishop and especially the chrism oil where the bishop himself will blow over the oils in other words he will impart the spirit that's what the word spirit means the breath he will put the breath of God, the breath that we hear in today's gospel, the breath of Jesus Christ because of his man-made rules telling the apostles, go out now under my authority, do it my way, and then you will be able to proclaim in justice and, in, and also in truth, the kingdom of God is at hand. So as we are going through Advent, now we have, we have to ask ourselves in a very honest way, do I put myself too forward? Or should I be pulling back and saying, no, no, it isn't supposed to be about me. It's like the individuals that are in Africa. The church is so huge, huge in Africa. 
And of course, uh, India with Father Paul, so huge. Now when people come to Mass, it isn't supposed to be what, what we get out of it or this fellowship that we, we uh, yeah, you come together with, but rather giving glory to God and making it all about God, where we put ourselves not just second, but even third for the sake of the kingdom of God. So again, just, uh, thinking about God's way, doing it Jesus' way, how are we doing making sure that, that he is the one that is being shown and not us? And hearing what Jesus says when it comes to the blessings that he gives, without cost you have received, without cost you are to give. So with that now, let us stand together, recognizing that we are very important to God, as we hear in also the, the first reading as well, that each and every one of us are, are precious in God's eyes. With that being in mind, we now turn to him in our humility and our lowliness, allowing God now to raise us up. We now present to him our petitions, our needs, our thanksgivings. So Heavenly Father, help us, especially during this Lenten, uh, Advent season in particular, to be able to put ourselves third in, in the mix, to allow ourselves to make it all about you instead of anything about us. Heavenly Father, help us to also, as we see in today's first reading from, from, Isaiah, uh, from Isaiah, to make sure that we recognize your daily blessings in our lives and to give you the thanks and the praise and the glory. We pray to the Lord. Now, Heavenly Father, we, we also approach you recognizing how delicate we are and at the same time how precious we are in your sight. We present to you those individuals that are being affected by this physical plague that exists in our world, the coronavirus. Not only just do we talk about those who are physically ill, but also suffering psychological illness and angst and concern. Heavenly Father, we, we need your peace in our lives, the peace that Jesus brought the apostles in the upper chamber and, uh, uh, after the crucifixion and, and feeling that same anxiety, and hearing Jesus speak to us in the 21st century into our world, peace be with you. Peace be with you. We pray to the Lord. And now, Heavenly Father, we also approach you with those who are suffering from now a spiritual plague. One advantage of the coronavirus, we, we recognize something that cannot be seen, something that, that is affecting our daily lives right, right to the very core. We also have a spiritual virus, that of humanism and secularism, and also a individualism and selfishness. Heavenly Father, help us to be cured of this disease as well so that we may advance in our spiritual life and be able to set aside the things of this world to give you the, the proper place in our lives. We pray to the Lord. Now to that uh, physical reality, that, that uh, the fruit of our secular society. Today, the abortuaries are in full service Saturday being dedicated to the mother of God and the evil one, being able to twist the knife and into our society and having the, those individuals who are contemplating abortion being served by doctors, nurses, and administrators in our culture of death. Heavenly Father, we, we pray for all of those who just do not understand the, the gospel of life, and we pray for their conversion. Heavenly Father, we in particularly think of the, the mothers who believe that this is the final solution that they have in, in whatever uh, difficulties they're facing and, and are contemplating abortion. Heavenly Father, send Mother Mary to, to be with these mothers herself, knowing what it is to be a mother. Whisper there in their ears a solution, or doors are locked, open a window for their sake. They may also embrace the gospel of life. We pray to the Lord. Now, Heavenly Father, we also think of those who persecute us, those who hate us because we do uh, practice, put into practice our faith. We think of those individuals such as those in the o Obama administration who think that they can come and dictate to, to the Catholic uh, in their practice of their faith and, and its expression into the real world. Heavenly Father, we pray for those who persecute us. that They may come to understand that, that we must walk according to your way, not ours, as prophet Isaiah speaks and the way that Jesus Christ told us as well. Heavenly Father, may those who persecute us come to conversion and also embrace the gospel of life. We pray to the Lord. 
now, Heavenly Father, at local levels, we also want to pray for our farmers and ranchers, giving you thanks for the blessings that you have bestowed upon us uh, this year with the beautiful weather and opportunities that have been given to us. Now, Heavenly Father, we, we pray that the farmers uh, are able to receive a blessing from their labors as we hear today's first reading, and have a successful and therefore a profitable harvest. We pray to the Lord. Now we turn to you with those who have died, gone before us in the mark of faith. We remember Maria Rankin in particular, but for all our holy dead, may they share the promise of eternal life with you in heaven. We pray to the Lord. Now we turn to you with those petitions and prayers that we hold dearest to our own hearts, again, recognizing how gracious and merciful you are that you know in faith you hear us when we call out to you. For all of these, we pray to the Lord. God, our Father, it is again with great appreciation that we are here to serve you at your altar. And now, Heavenly Father, responding to your call, so subtle, so so uh, impre, uh, impre, un, 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 uh, unfelt, but at the same time, we've responded and are now here. Now in faith, we present to you these petitions, knowing you can make perfect what is imperfect according to your will. Recognize you will give us nothing that will keep us from eternal life. Trusting you, we present them to you through Jesus Christ, our mediator, our Lord, our eldest brother. We know lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Give the earth and work of human hands to come for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine of you, the fruit of the vine, and work of human hands, to become our spiritual prayer. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the sacrifice of our worship, Lord, we pray, be offered to you as an instrument to complete what was begun in sacred history, powerfully accomplished for us, uh, for us through your saving work through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right to give thanks to you, our salvation, and to you, the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord, the Holy Father, Almighty and Lord our God, through Christ our Lord. For he that assumed that his first coming alone would be the good flesh, and so fulfilled the design from the world long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation, that 
when he comes again in glory and majesty and all that is at last day and manifest, we who watch for that day will make terror the great promise which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, the thrones of the east, and with all the hosts of the powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God is holy. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the God of all things. Most holy, O Lord, you have us, we pray, by sending out your spirit upon the men that we fall, so that they may become to us the body and blood of the Father and of Jesus Christ. Thine earth, we pray that you would willingly fashion. He took bread and he gave me thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples. Take this, all of you, and drink of it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for me. For the forgiveness of sins, do this in memory of me. Mystery of days, save us, Savior of the world, and by your cross and resurrection. Therefore, for death, we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection. Now, the glory and bread of life, the chalice of salvation. Giving thanks, let us worship and confirm our sanctification in this way. Humbly we pray, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we meet together in the one heaven and one earth. Remember, Lord, your church and bread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together, with Francis, our Pope, and God of our Virgin, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who are born again in the hope of the resurrection, and all those who died. Welcome them into my three days. Have mercy on us all, we pray. Let us the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the blessed Joseph, the apostles, the blessed apostles, all the saints of Jesus throughout the ages, who be married and co heirs of eternal life, be praised and glorified through your Son. the Savior's command, performed by the mighty teaching of the prayer of today. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from the evil. So graciously we pray, and in our days, by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from evil and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of the truth, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. Live and reign forever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be saved.
Let us pray. We implore your mercy, Lord, that this divine sustenance may cleanse us from our faults and prepare us for the coming of Jesus through Christ our Lord. Well, I hope uh, that what I would say in that memorial will be of any way to reflect on very much, uh, very, very much in Catholic society, particularly in the communities that we have with the type of ritual now and the blood of oil, breath of the bishop. Now you also understand why uh, breath, when I was ordained a priest, the same Holy Spirit was imposed upon me. You do know that during the Mass, I will actually bend over the gifts, blow over the gifts, the Holy Spirit bending to be put upon the church. And you see this in particular with uh, the Orthodox, where they teach in my church of the Orthodox, they teach you much on the dance, the, uh, the breath, 
with people. And so I think it gives you an opportunity to talk to other people, right? Even mass isn't just for the congregation to gather. It can act as the Holy Spirit continues to bring forth things that's received by the breath of God that is given to us. That's why we have to hear, I hope that's where we're going with this, as we hear today, uh, we pray for continued cultivation and harvesting of you for the laborers of the field. Let's pray to God the Father to send a vocation, a call to vocation to people who respond to that call and consider the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. 